Hi, I'm Felipe. Welcome to the Postmodern Family. In this episode, we are doing a challenge. So our one of our graduates, who's from Wales, is going to cook an American recipe, meatloaf and mashed potatoes. And we, Americans, are going to cook a British recipe. We're going to cook a Sunday roast and see how that comes out. Hello everyone, if you don't know, I am one of the interns for PMF and we have decided to do a little bit of a challenge. They are going to be cooking a traditional British Sunday dinner and I'm going to be cooking a traditional American meal which is meatloaf and mashed potatoes. So I've never cooked meatloaf before, I've cooked mashed potatoes before, I've already got over here fresh potatoes, but yeah, we'll see how it goes and let's get right into it. The key to a delicious, juicy roast chicken is to use a halogen oven. You get a juicy interior and a crispy exterior. The skin is just delicious and not overcooked and the inside is not underdone and it's not overdone. The worst thing I think in life is to have dry chicken. But anyway, the key is what I do is I marinate the chicken with salt, pepper, garlic powder, uh, a little bit of Montreal chicken seasoning, which I got from America. And I put a little bit of olive oil on that to make it all stick. And then I add on top of that some soy sauce, some dark soy sauce. And I rub it all in and I let it, I let it marinate like that. And then I put a low rack in the halogen oven and I put it with the breast side down, so upside down first, so that you cook half of it on 30 minutes that way, and then after 30 minutes on high, which is 200 degrees Fahrenheit with the, with the fan, you flip it over and then you cook it for another 25 minutes uh, at 200 degrees Celsius. Sorry, I think I said Fahrenheit. 200 degrees Celsius. It is absolutely delicious. Now, remember, so this is a nice tip for you. Once you're finished, once it dings, you have to take the lid off. You cannot leave the lid on and let all of that soak up because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get the skin all soaking and wet and not crispy. It's gonna kind of wilter like, like that. So once the chicken's done, you have to take the lid off or else there's no crispy chicken skin, all right? Okay, so first things first, had to put the comfy clothes on because it turns out I'm a little bit of a mess when I cook. Um, so I'm using a BBC Good Food recipe on my laptop, which I've got, got right here. <laughs> Hopefully it all goes to plan. I've got my ham, got the mints, got all my herbs and spices. And I've got the parmesan as well, got my eggs, got everything I need here. So let me have a look at the recipe and see how we get on. So heat the oven. Preheat the oven, that is a really solid start. <laughs> um, the other thing that, so the next item, of the Sunday roast that is very important to get correct are the potatoes. It took me a long time to figure this out. So originally I didn't know what I was doing and I never boiled them and I don't know what I was thinking. But here is how I make roast potatoes. I first cut the potatoes up in pieces that are rather large, not too small because if it's too small then it'll just disintegrate in the boiling water. And I leave the skin on and I put it in a pot with boiling water and I let it boil for like 10 minutes. Um, you wanna make sure that the interior is soft-ish. Um, you don't want the skin to be flaking off, peeling off really easily though. That would be really bad. So you wanna keep the, the you wanna make sure that you're not over cooking it in, over boiling it, if that makes sense. So after you boil it, then you drain it out and you make sure it's really dry. So you let the steam evaporate, you shake it around a little bit, you don't want excess moisture on those potatoes. Then 
you add some seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and some flour. You shake it up in there, rigorously shake it, and you'll see that the edges, the outside, will get a little fluffy because you're shaking it and it's introducing some of that air underneath the skin. And that flour is also gonna get it nice and dry on the outside, crisp it up. While you're doing that, you need to put your pan with oil inside the oven at 200 degrees uh, Celsius with fan on. And I cook everything with the fan on. So you have to heat up the oil first, and then when you're ready to put the potatoes in the pan, you take it out of the oven so it's really nice and hot, and you dump the potatoes out onto the hot oil, and you should see it kind of sizzle in there, and that's a good sign. Um, I also like to throw some like whole garlic cloves in there, just delicious. So you shake it up and try and get a little bit of the olive, uh, the olive oil or whatever oil you're using coating onto the outside of the potatoes and you pop it back into the oven and you cook that for a long time. Like, I don't really time everything, I just kind of check on it, but I'd say about 45 minutes, it would be really nice, delicious and crispy potato. Um, in the middle of that, every 20 minutes or so, you should probably open it up and shake it around and move them around and that's what I do quite often, so that's why I don't time it, I just kind of keep an eye on it. So we need an onion and a garlic clove to start us off, so chopping those up now. I'm using this little food processor as my thing is actually called Blitz. So I'm going to blitz it in just a second. Okay, so that's the garlic in there now. So what I'm going to do next, a bit of a quick, quick tidy up. Okay, so I've got my onions and garlic in here. Got my breadcrumbs ready to go in the bowl. Fabulous. So that can go in the wash. Now, the pork in here as well. I think a safer option right now is to take my ring and watch off just in case. Because <laughs> last time I made homemade meatballs, everything just smelled a little bit of just mints. The next item are Yorkshire puddings. You've got to have a good Yorkie. Now, I found a really easy recipe on, I think it was BBC Good Food, and I've stuck to it ever since. I did try the Mary Berry one and it did not work out. So I don't know what happened there, Mary, but um, I'm sticking with the BBC Good Foods recipe. Uh, so how I do this is in a bowl, you put 140 grams of plain flour. Very important, do not use self-raising flour. You have to use plain, fl plain flour. And then four eggs, you beat it up in there. You add 200 milliliters of milk and beat it up again. And then you add a little bit of seasoning, salt, pepper, whatever you want. And then I mix that in nice and well. Then I pour that into a container and I put that in the refrigerator and let that cool down and sit a little bit. Um, and then while that's happening, the you have to take your muffin tin out, which I'm so grateful I have this, even though uh, it's really a hassle cleaning up. It doesn't, it's very, it's not non-stick enough. I don't know what you guys would recommend. I probably just need to buy a new muffin tin pan thing. Um, but anyway, in the bottom of every little tin, you pour a bit of sunflower oil. Now, make sure you pour enough. You don't want to pour too little because if you pour too little when the Yorkshire pudding batter goes in there and it's, you know, growing in the oven, it'll stick to the sides really bad. So you want to put enough oil in there that it will cover all the way around. So I'd say I, I when I, as I'm pouring it, I just try and eyeball it that, that, that there's a, at least like, 
I don't know, two milliliters or three milliliters from the bottom, like filled. So you pour that evenly into all of the little tin things, the little, I don't know, pockets. And then you put that in the oven at 210 degrees Celsius with the fan on, and you let that get really hot. And once it's really hot, then you can take it out. You can pour, take the battery out from batter out from the refrigerator and you pour it into all the little compartments. Now I made this mistake once. You're not supposed to fill it all the way to the top. <laughs> so I fill it about halfway because it's going to grow, right? It's going to inflate in the, in the oven. So I fill it up to halfway and then stick it in there and close it. And you are not supposed to open the door to check on anything. You have to leave it in there for 22 minutes. That's how long I put it in there for. The range is 20 to 25 minutes. I find 22 minutes to be the perfect amount of time for the Yorkshire pudding. Okay, so I've got my mince and breadcrumbs in here. We'll be adding the rest of this in just a second. We're just gonna add some oregano to the mix. I'm doing this by eye because I think hooves and spices are okay by eye, right? Yeah. That'll be fine. Lovely jubbly. Okay. Right. I'm actually really excited to use this because this is brand new, so let's see how it goes. So that is all finely chopped in my little blitzer. Now, oh wow, okay, can I add that in? Oh, it smells really nice. It smells great already. <laughs> okay. Oh, didn't mean to turn it on. I think that's a bit of a health and safety uh, issue right there. I think I might get. really want to waste anything to be honest. Try not to waste anything. Okay. Okay, so next up we are adding parmesan. And okay. so cheese grater will be handy. And again I really like cheese and it said four little um, teaspoons. <laughs> but no, we're just gonna I think we're just gonna great until we're happy. I mean with cooking you can just kind of follow the recipe for a little bit. Even though I haven't really done meat meatloaf before I should really do it by the recipe but who doesn't like cheese? <laughs> who doesn't like cheese? And it's a Sunday. That is fabulous. I think Oh, just a little touch more, touch more. Lovely jubbly. Okay, put that over there. Got a dishwasher right here, so that's why I'm bending down all the time. And I'm going to add my egg. Oh, no shell, no shell. Please, no shell. Ah. Yes. God, that's always a bit of a tense moment. <laughs> Okay, so now we are going to add our ham. Add our ham into the mix. Very excited about this actually, it looks really good. is the mixture before it is mixed. Aha. Uh -huh. Wee bit of salt and pepper. And I'm guessing and now it says mix well so here we go. Okay so I think this is mixed and it does sell the recipe you can mix with your hands or with a fork, but I always prefer to use my hands. 
so that is all. It looks like a giant meatball, actually. But I guess it's going to be a meatloaf. Haha. -ha. That's where the loaf tin comes in. Right, I will just wash my hands. Um, okay. The next item on of how to have a really delicious Sunday roast is the gravy. Now I did not go all British and use just watery gravy. I just cannot stand that. So this is how I make gravy. I start with water, boiling water, and I add um, a little tablet of um, chicken bouillon or chicken stock. I let that dissolve in there. I add some sh salt some pepper, some garlic powder or garlic granules, and some butter, and some soy sauce. And then at, at, after seasoning it all and it mixes in really well, then I add some flour. So the flour, I have to, you have to put cold water in a bowl with flour, mix it up first, and then dump it into the hot boiling gravy mixture that you're making and then that will mix in very smoothly. Now, that's not all. The final piece to a delicious gravy is the fat from the chicken you're roasting. So when the chicken is done, you pull it out and you pour the fat into your gravy mix. I know some of you are probably like, absolutely, this, some people are probably thinking that's really gross, but we love to eat the fat <laughs> and find it very delicious. And in fact, it's healthy for you. Fat is not the enemy, pretty much sugar is. So, um, so we mix that in. I just would use a little whisk and make sure it's nice mixed in with the gravy and then put that in the gravy boat. And that's, that's it, that's how I make my gravy. I like to also add a little bit of Italian herb seasoning, mixed herb seasoning or like basil. And that just makes it a little bit more um, of a different flavor than everything else. So, yeah, that's pretty straightforward, really easy gravy mix. Okay, so right now I'm just going to line my tin. Ready to go. Using a cake liner, because I uh, <laughs> don't really get low tin liners at the moment. So that's why we had to be a little bit creative, but hopefully it will work. So now, this is a bit I'm actually really excited for, using the ham to line it. I think this is pretty cool. Just gonna put that all in there. on the BBC food recipe. Never even thought about making meatloaf before. Whenever I see it on like American sitcoms and stuff, I'm thinking, what is, what's meatloaf? But now, whoa, sorted. <laughs> we just need a big spoon. And we're gonna put our mixture into the tin. Maybe said to make sure it's flattened down, so. So this is what it looks like at the moment. Ooh, just flipped over my ham, don't I? That's meant to happen. The recipe said to flip your ham over. So it lines the top. This is gonna be pretty cool. Okie dokie. Right, just check. I don't need to do anything else before putting it in the oven. So now this is the bit I'm a bit unsure of. It says to put hot water on the top. So, I've got quite a small loaf tin, I'm not going to overload it with the hot water, I don't think. But we'll see how it goes. I'm always a bit skeptical using water in cooking. I don't know why, but I'm going to go wash my hands while the kettle's boiling. Water, in case of spillage. 
Not sure how I feel about this. Oh, look, it's good. Okay, okay, I'm done. Right, I guess it's time to pop open the oven and wait for an hour, see how we get on. The next item, the, the next three or four items are, or is it two, um, are the carrots and the peas. They're just standard, boiling them, you know, cutting them up, boiling them, putting some salt on it. And then I like to season it with butter and a little bit of salt and a little bit of garlic granules. So that's how I do mine. And I think that's really delicious. So I think that's the plate. I think we had chicken, Yorkshire pudding, a potato, carrots, and peas. I don't have any special way of plating them, but I do now cut, carve the roast chicken for everyone. So I used to, back in the beginning of my roast cooking days, uh, I used to bring the whole roast out and put it on the table and Felipe would cut it and divide it and all that. And now I'm just like, nah, let's just plate them because I know what pieces people want. I know what they like. They've seen the beauty of a roast before, so they don't need to look at it again. So I just go ahead and cut up the pieces. My favorite are the dark meat. I love the, the thighs, the drumstick, the wing, and the parson's nose. And Felipe and the kids are happy with eating breast, chicken breast, um, as long as they get enough skin. And uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so now it's time to mash the potatoes. We've also decided on a last minute, use the rest of the peas, so <laughs> hopefully it'll taste nice. Okay, so potatoes are done. Just gonna add the peas in now. Okay, the peas have literally just gone everywhere. <laughs> Okay, here it is. Here is the meatloaf. So now, just tip it whoop, inside out. Whoop. It's come apart a little bit, but otherwise, I think it looks okay. I'll have to cut in and see how it looks. make it once a week sometimes it's on Sundays and sometimes not and uh, it, I've gotten it down to about an hour and a half so it takes me about an hour and a half to cook this whole meal which I think is quite good because back in America when I would cook like a roast for Thanksgiving it would take like three hours I don't know what I was doing <laughs> wasting all that time um, so I'm so grateful for the Andrew James halogen oven that we use and um, and all the recipes that I've collected over the time, over over this year or two that I've really perfected the Sunday roast. I like the Sunday roast. I like everything that's in it. And, but I don't like gravy on it. I don't like gravy on any of my food. Yeah, the roast is unbelievable and it's one of the best gifts that England has given to the world and I would highly recommend that all of you around the world who are watching us here today that you master it 
And if I would just be served a Sunday roast from Lillian versus, let's say, her best meatloaf and mash, I would always go for the Sunday roast. Have I then completely gone and left my American roots? No. I think Americans do do a Sunday roast, but I just, it wasn't um, something I partook of when I was in the States. I'd never encountered a chicken Sunday roast. Um, but I'm sure it does occur. And maybe some of you um, purists there might say, well, that just proves that you're not really American. We get these comments like, where are the Americans on the video? It's just so silly. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching us devour Lillian's chicken Sunday roast. Okay, so yesterday I made my very first American meat, love and mashed potato. And I will definitely be having it again. It was, it was weird. It was so lovely, but it, uh, everything was so smushed together. I mean, it kind of tasted a bit weird in my mouth, kind of like a pate, but a really nice, really nice one with all these different flavors. I think the only thing which I was surprised by, I didn't really taste the parmesan in there, even though I was grating and grating like that. I'm gonna put loads in, um, but yeah, no, it was a really fun challenge. Really enjoyed it and definitely will try it again. There are lots and lots of different meatloaf recipes. I mean, I'll put the link down below. I use the BBC Good Food recipe. And in fact, Lillian has also used BBC Good Food roast chicken recipe for her Sunday roast. It was really fun to see PMF doing it. They're so precise. Lillian does it in an hour and a half, you know, and then there's me like, okay, right, turn the oven on. <laughs> um, so yeah, even with a couple of little mistakes, and even though it kind of fell apart at the end, it still tasted fantastic. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I think stay tuned for another food challenge, I think. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what we do, there are many ways to support us. The easiest and cheapest way is to like, comment, subscribe, and share the videos. That costs you nothing. You can also buy music, you can buy merchandise, and you can become a patron at patreon.com slash the postmodern family. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.